Craig Gudelman here again. I'm going to teach you another old time fiddle tune. This time we're going to do a bit more of a song uh, called The Blackest Crow, or As Time Draws Near, um, which is a great way to learn some of those different little turns and things, some of the, the old time playing that comes more from the Irish and Scottish way of playing the fiddle than from the African or German way. Uh, but it's all there. And um, as usual, I'll show it to you. I'll play it first simple, then a bit more how I do it, and then I'll show you each of those ways. Uh, these waltzes are a great way also just to work on your tone and, and you know the, the phrasing and playing with emotion, which are all important things even when you're playing a fast fiddle tune. Uh, so don't feel like uh, you should only be spending your time learning the fastest, craziest jam tunes. It's, uh, it's well worth putting a bit of time on these old ballads and things. So here it goes. So let's start off with it real simple and uh, work on getting the notes and some of the bowing and then we'll add in more of those turns. Um, in general with these waltzes, often you want this feeling of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, right? It just kind of gives you a nice lilt and uh, or if you have a few notes or just to change it up sometimes you can do a little... kind of your basic shuffle with an extra beat in the middle. Uh, and then you can also take that bow and really, really ghost, really make the second one of the short bows really quiet. So you get something like. Right, which is kind of has a nice lift to it. Uh, so just so you have some basic ideas uh, if the bowing's giving you trouble, start out by just really working on those three different ways of bowing it. Um, I always seem to tap my foot on the first and third beats for waltzes. That works for me. Uh, if it's helpful for you, then do that too. Um, so here's the tune. So I'll start on the up bow. that again. And you'll notice I'm doing a lot of hammer-ons even when I'm playing it really simply. Uh, so let me just point those out to you. Right, it's not 
It could be also, but usually I'll either do or without the hammer on and do a pull off going down. Right, so I'm and then hammering on there. And notice the timing. So from the top there. So let's add in a few more little turns into that whole thing. Um, one you could do on that first bit. No, erase that. Uh, let's learn the B part, and then we'll come back and uh, throw in some more, more fancy stuff on that A part. So the B part. There's a lot of different droning you can do, but I do quite often do that in that fourth finger in the E string, hopefully in tune. And I try not to slide that one too much. Sometimes I do a lot of this, uh, but here it's a bit more delicate of a thing, right? So it's nice to get that hammer on. Often I find in these things, you can do the slides on the old ballads and stuff and they have the right place, but often the hammer-ons will be a little bit more effective at giving you this sort of rolling, lilting sound without making it too over the top. Um, but it's a matter of choice, of course, and uh, preference. Uh, so let's do that whole B part one more time. He's sort of droning some of the weird notes. Keep the E string. And I might play that, that D over the E minor chord if the guitarist is doing that. Or I might go and do sort of the power chord with the first finger on both strings to make it more resonant. Uh, but it depends. It's a little bit of weirdness is nice. It's also nice with the E string if you can get in tune. And then back to the A section. So okay, let's let's add those turns in there. Uh, so the first one, instead of doing the hammer on or pull off, you could also do a turn. The key with these turns is to get that finger that's hitting on top of the first finger really quick. Uh, so it's just a little tap. I'll give you the most noty version and then you can take out whatever you want. Uh, so it's starting on the up bow. Again. You notice 
that one there. It's just really fast. But I'm doing the same thing. You almost can't tell what it is when it's in time, right? If that's a bit tricky, you can also just do a little pull off. Sometimes I'll throw a little. There's the nice slide, right? Those ornaments always have to be fast, and the key is that the ornaments go around the melody, and the melody this itself is always the most important thing, and that's clear. If the ornament becomes so big that it makes the melody seem unclear or offbeat, then it's, then it's too much. Uh, but I'm just trying to play for here all the options at once so you can get an idea of what is possible. So here's that A section one more time. chord there, I like to throw that in the right moments. And that's just the third finger with the second finger above it. It's actually one of the harder chords to play, those fourths, uh, but if you can get it in tune, it can sound really nice. So, uh... slide going down there one more time so I should show you that a little bit better do an extra hammer on the A bottom notes, sometimes I, I like a lot this, I think it's a little more old-timey kind of to land with the open G string and get that suspended six chord instead of the fully minor sounding. But when you want to really drive the point home, there's nothing like that. So feel free to do both of them. You can, I sometimes also like to kind of show the beat a bit, especially if I'm playing solo with that G string drone, like, a, like that. coming in sometimes just to mark certain beats and give the feeling of like a rocking pulse. All right, let's go into the B section. So if you 
one here, you can throw in another classic turn coming from the the, the, uh, the British Isles, the Irish Isles, all those islands over there. There's quite a few variations of that. Or what I did there. I like that because it reminds me more of the, the singing quality. I'm always trying to find the the sound of the singer's voice really in the fiddle. So let's try that. So try and get that there with the with that slur on the up bow coming after it. Try, try and see if you can get a lot of those ornaments and then take them out some and really put them in the right spot. There's nothing like playing a few ornaments and some nice drones and then you get to the really sensitive moment and suddenly you're just playing really simple single notes, you know, and, and use dynamics, use shading and, uh, and really make it into, a, you know, an expressive piece and not just a song. So I'll play for you one more time uh, with all that stuff in there and... Uh, then you can give, give it a shot and make your own version. So here goes, Blackest Crow. 